We are back. <laughs> and uh, Dog is celebrating Ephraim uh, win. Yeah, that was an exciting match or uh, something along those lines. <laughs> it, uh, yeah, I mean, I was a little, you know, obviously I know you wouldn't do this, but I was making the joke today at lunch with Ephraim. I'm like, so is Luis going to throw it for you so you can get in? And he's like, he wouldn't do that. And I'm like, I know he wouldn't. Now, obviously, I was just being funny, but... Uh, Based on the awful hands you had after your mulligans, you, you literally, your deck looks like it doesn't do anything. Um, yeah, I, I basically, yeah. So it looks like the match is ready, but we can talk about my bad luck later. <laughs> Did you go 0-3? Uh, no, I went 1-2. I beat Chris in round one with this. Oh, okay, okay. You did win a match. All right, so yeah, we're, I'm excited to see this one. We have uh, Chris Bakula at 4-4 four and four playing uh, the Invitationalist, is what I like to call it, with uh, Bob in Meddling Mage. The yep. rare bears <laughs> Esper deck, and Randy fighting to get out of the cellar because of the three-way tie for last. If Randy, Josh, or Bob lose, then they are you know in the bottom, and they need one of the other ones to lose. So, Randy's opening hand only has one island. He does have a paw, a curse catcher, and Chris starts with misstep. Chris's hand looks pretty good for this matchup. He's got land. He's got a misstep for the first play. Swords to plowshares is really good in this matchup. Yeah, and I would expect uh, the matchup to slightly favor Randy, but I could see, I could certainly see Chris winning here. I mean, Chris, Chris's deck does have a lot of actual creatures and like cards like Swords to Plowshares, which are pretty good against Randy. Yes, Swords is incredible. It's one of the things I wanted to play last weekend at the uh, Vintage Champs. I just think the card is is really well positioned right now because creatures are so huge. Although Mental Misstep, you know, gives everybody a, a trump to that, which is another reason to have your own missteps back. Yep. So this is an interesting thought. He's here. Randy only has one land, so I'm pretty sure you take the Ponder, but he took the Silver Grail Adept. I would probably take the Ponder, but it's a little greedy, but I know from playing Fish that you are a land-like deck, and you're not likely to draw one this turn, and it doesn't give you a, you know an extra... An yeah, extra I, I agree that I'd probably take the Ponder. The, the, downside, the main downside to that is Chris isn't, Chris's hand isn't going to win in the game very soon here, and given that, given that you're going to play for a longer game, you know, just trying to take Randy's best card is, is worth it. Although Ponder is, is still pretty dang good. I mean, yeah, uh, yeah. I think I probably I, might have taken the Ponder there. I agree with you about taking the Ponder, but I think if you if you think you're going to have to win a long game, maybe taking Adept is less cards to grind through. Yeah, it's definitely the second best option here. So Chris with a, a timely Ancestral Recall. And, and Randy shuffled off the Ponder, by the way, and didn't, <laughs> you know, and didn't play a land. So... And you, and you got... You know Randy most likely doesn't have a misstep either because he would have probably misstepped back. So you're only really trying to go against Force of Will is your only, you know, reason you wouldn't Ancestral Recall. I, I could see actually casting Time... I like Time Walk first so you can then Ancestral play a two-drop. Chris's cards are all twos. No, no, so, I wasn't saying, Yeah, obviously. Yeah. Obviously, the reasons why you might not want to wait for permission to yeah. cast that. Oh, yeah, he's definitely not doing that. You're, you're right. We've got a special guest <laughs> watching the magic. Liliana's here. All right, so yeah, now he's got uh, he got a pretty awesome force of will and a blue card off of his ancestral here. And Randy again. So far, this is looking like your match. Another match where one player is not really participating. Yeah, Chris does want to put put a threat out though. The the longer the game goes, Randy's deck does have more threats and ones that Chris can't really stop. I mean, sort of pleasures helps, but I, I think I think Chris, you know, he's kind of under a clock. Yeah, I mean, he's a clock under the constraints of his own deck. I think it's a good spot here to pop off the Nihil Spellbomb. You're going to shut off yeah. future spell cruises, and you got to search for a threat. Yeah, you really do want to find something here. Like, uh, Randy's not just going to do nothing forever. So his best threat would probably just be Dark Confidant, right? I mean, he doesn't want... Yeah, when, when, you're at, when you're at a high life total and not facing any pressure, Dark Confidant's by far the best. Later in the game, you know, you'd prefer to have something that's not pinging you, but for now, Confidant sounds like a good plan. Like, drawing a bunch of Force of Will is just not good against a deck that has Cavern of Souls and all, all cheap threats. But drawing Dark Confidence is pretty good. One sec. <laughs> well, he did find Dark Confidant with Double Force of Swords backup. You want to go see Ephra? Sorry. She just woke up. She was taking a little nap. It's okay. Look, can you say hi? You don't want to say hi either? 
I didn't know she that she was rooting for Randy here. <laughs> yeah, she's actually sad that you lost. She's a big Luis fan. <laughs> so even though he has, you know, hold on. I'm gonna go take I'm gonna take her upstairs. One sure. sec. Sorry to leave you alone. So e- even though uh, Randy has drawn a land here, the fact that Chris has five mana in play and is gonna get to kill, you know. Randy's first threat and, you know, has a bunch of Force Wheels. Because Randy actually has actual spells in in, uh, in hand, t- too. Like, Time Walk and Treasure Coos, not that Treasure Coos is getting cast anytime soon, are the, are actually cards you can Force of Will. So, so, and it looks like uh, Ifro has the guest commentator here. <laughs> hey, Fro, you want to take over for a, a few minutes till Dave gets back? Yeah. Um, daughter right here also going crazy. <laughs> yeah. All right, so, catch up. Well, Randy pondered, missed his second land drop, and missed it again. Jeez. But Chris, you know, is, is facing down a bunch of uncountable lords here. Chris might actually still lose this game. Yeah, Force of Will not good against Cavernous Souls. Yeah, Randy happened to draw Cavern as a second land. That's the land he needed to come back in the game. Oh, so. Captain Island Ponder missed and hit Cavern. That's great, yeah. <laughs> And flipping Force of Will is not, not what you want to do. I mean, Chris is, I think, just dead now. <laughs> like, Randy gets to play Lord of Atlantis and just and just kill Chris. Wow. Yeah, I'm not, I haven't really studied Chris's deck lesson, and I'm certainly not super familiar with it as a... <laughs> it's not a super known deck, I guess, although it's not too far off from some of the other decks. Oh, look, like a beat down. <laughs> Still a time walk in hand, huh? Yep. And Shredder Furious, which basically can't be cast in his deck. All right. So, post-board, Chris gets the best card in the matchup, uh, Moat. Randy can't beat a resolved Moat, so... Yeah, I saw I saw Chris's tweet, but I hadn't looked at his deck yet, where he's like, we'd start with the card in play. I was hoping it would be like Low Wand or something, just like Unreal, but I guess Moat is right in that same boat. Yeah, and uh, so, I, I mean, as Randy and Chris were talking about pregame, Randy needs to deck Chris if that happens, and that's just not going to happen. So <laughs> it seems pretty yeah. unlikely here. she good? Yeah, she's fine. All right, D-Dubs is back. All right. All right, sorry about that. So uh, Chris took that one, I guess? No, he didn't. Uh, Randy drew Cavern of Souls as a second land okay. and was able to get through all of Chris's Force of Wills, and Chris just flipped Force off Bob and just died to a bunch of lords. <laughs> oh, all the, all the lords. All the lords came through, and... Yeah, that makes sense. So, Chris's sideboard, you said he does have moat? Has I heard you and Efro talking? Uh, yeah, moat. Chris has a, Chris has one moat in his sideboard, which is, which is pretty sweet. So, Path is not as sweet, because Randy has basic lands, but you still need it. So yeah, is but... Right, yeah, I mean... It, it is unfortunate that Randy can actually go for, for lands, but uh, he runs out of things to do with his lands pretty quickly here. I was very fortunate. I got Path this weekend, and I had the uh, the basic mountain sideboarded in in a matchup. Yeah. And I was able to get another basic land. And Moat, he, does not, does he, he has no way to deal with the Moat either. No, absolutely none. Uh, and then something like, I guess, Path, Restoration Angel. I mean, just because Angel's a 3-4 flyer. So, I... I I mean, I think the matchup gets better for Chris post board, but I think it's still not great. What comes out? Spirit of the Labyrinth? Steel Spirit sabotage. you might keep because it's a 3-1. Uh, Steel Sabotage. Yeah, cards cards that uh, that die to Null Rod are kind of bad. Flusterstorm and Spellpierce don't seem great either. Yeah. Yeah, Death Spell Bomb at Cantrips, and it stops Treasure Cruises. Yeah. It doesn't stop them, but it, it hurts. I mean, it hinders the future treasure cruises. Yeah, it, it, it was okay game one, except, you, you know, cycling and uh, making treasure cruises a little worse. But uh, still, yeah, not I think really the card you want. There are deader cards that you would take out before the skull yeah. Fluster Storm type cards. I mean, Fluster Storm's not dead. It's not great. Yeah, and it looks like they're ready, so we're going to go ahead and go to game two here. All right. Uh, 
So, so it looks like Chris has a thought seize. He did not mulligan. Randy has the misstep. And he's also got a black lotus, which is always great in your opening hand if you have something to cast with it, but he does not have a threat. He has well, wasteland, except Chris has tons of mana. So this is actually a pretty awkward draw from both sides. Yeah, the, the, the problem is that both decks do nothing for a little while. I think Randy's is still just ahead because he eventually, not only does he have cards like Treasure Cruise, which, you know, maybe not the best in his deck, but still decent. He just has, once, if they both have two creatures in play, Randy's winning by a lot. So the longer the game goes, the more likely it is to occur. Engineered Explosives is, is going to be interesting for Chris, but I, I don't know, you know, I don't think Randy's going to get in a situation where he has too many threats out. Because his hand only has one anyways. He's probably going to end up having to one for one it with nothing else in his hand. Uh, if I'm Randy here, I think I just Wasteland. <clears throat> you don't know that Chris has a handful of mana. Yeah, and just going for the turn one Wasteland it basically like sets you both back a turn, but, you know, again, if Chris doesn't have lands, it's just way better for you. The right. only... The other alternative is waiting till you have Lord out, then away signing, but that's so many turns in the future. And the thing is, now, if he's able to draw another two-drop creature, he can play both with Land Lotus, and have days back up too, and they're like, Land Lotus, Lord, you know, other creature, which is fantastic. Otherwise, he'd have to, like, burn some Black Lotus mana if he wanted to play a, a Lord that turn, or just sit back and do nothing other than play a land, which is definitely not the right play in this style of deck. Yeah, I don't know if I like burning Lord for or Lotus for Lord, especially when you have Cavern in your hand and Days. Yeah, I was saying I wouldn't play it yeah. now. I would wait. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I agree. I was just trying to think of how, how you know if Randy wants to put out Lord here. Also, the Lord is the first creature. It's just a two-two. It's a, it, it's not absurd. Right. We'll see if Randy goes for it here. Yeah, I don't really love that play. I mean, it's, it's obviously the Black Lotus in this style of deck, everything's cheap anyway. It doesn't have a lot of late game value, but being able to, to, to play extra threats later is huge and, you know, cast a treasure cruise early if you need it. Yeah. If you draw another Merfolk, you would have rather waited. Uh, obviously, you're not as worried about Force of Will because, you know, Chris doesn't have a ton of blue cards and it's just not good in the matchup. But So waiting on Cavern doesn't necessarily help. No, it's just like if Chris were to untap and like swords swords his lord there, he really yeah. kind of just used his his whole load for nothing. Yeah. And now he doesn't have a creature to play, you know, to reveal for this adept. Whereas had he waited, he could show the lord, play the adept off off the lotus, and then from there play the lord. I like Chris playing around days. He, he well, he, he's not only playing around days. I mean, because he's also he's also uh, in a spot where he can get two two merfolk maybe if he waits a little longer with explosives. Yeah, there's there's no pressure. Chris is live. I mean, it's twelve, but he he can wait. He's, he can afford to wait one or two more turns. Yeah, not a ton more. Actually, he's always he's uh, really kind of at ten with two sacklands in play because he's going to have to sack those. So it's something to yeah. be mindful of by playing those sacklands over playing a tundra. Yeah, this uh, might be. Go ahead. Yeah, playing explosives on four might be might might be the best. Like, I don't think you can just wait forever to play it. Next turn, if he plays it before playing a land, if Randy does have a cre two creatures out, he might daze it thinking he couldn't activate it that turn. Then Chris can yeah. play land and activate it too, which is kind of a, an added bonus. He might get a daze yeah. out of his hand. That's true. The other advantage to waiting is you have a force. If you draw a blue card to pitch to force, you can back you know, get explosives with backup. It is awkward having explosives for two be your most powerful explosives in a deck where your deck is also full of two drops. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> but I think Chris's deck is just... It's a, it's a little bit awkward to begin with. I don't actually hate Spirit of the Labyrinth just because without another Lord in play, it does trade. Yeah, it's weird here, though. Uh, now, like, I kind of think if he was going to make that play, he should have actually played it. It's dangerous because if he just draws a lord, then all of a sudden your plan doesn't work, and there's no guarantee he'll attack into your spirit, and then you'll later have to explosives away your spirit anyway, so it's probably better to do what he just did. But I, it is worth mentioning, I do like what I said about not playing the Tundra first. It's probably yeah. not going to happen, but Randy might have just dazed it to try to make him sack a sack land and think that he may not have another land and don't have to wait a turn. Yeah, I, I, I like your play. Uh, I think given that Randy has the force and he needs to pitch days to it, he probably isn't going to go for it, but it's a free roll, right? There's no reason not to try to go for that. 
Right. There's no reason not to at least wait and play your land after. There's no benefit yeah. where you're going to need that mana. It's not like he has you're power <laughs> sink or something like that. <laughs> that would be sweet if you did, though. Wow, another strip mine. Wow, Randy's play of just playing a 2-2 might just go all the way. It's possible. Chris is just going to take... I mean, taking a 2 to make sure Randy can't play another card this turn is not bad. But... Yeah. I don't think you can wait forever on the explosives. Yeah, I mean, Randy's never going to put out another creature as long as it's sitting there, so you might as well blow it as soon as you can. He could yeah. still try to build up critical mass in his hand so that he can deal with the onslaught that Randy's going to play after the explosives pops, but uh, he doesn't have, to, like you said, he's at eight with two sack lands. He doesn't have too much time. This is, it is funny that, it, you know, when you post combat strip mine and you and you float and then you try to leave your main phase if Chris uses explosives, Randy could have played a, <laughs> another creature, but that is a kind of funny, like how the mana floating works out there. Yeah, I don't think you can just sit there and just, just keep getting hammered by a lord. It's not like Randy's going to be like, oh, two more creatures, you know. So Good. here we go. The good news is, you know, now you one of the spot one of the bad problems in this matchup is you get in this spot where you've kind of one for one and all of a sudden Randy draws a treasure cruise and just fills up his hand again. At least with this three one out, you don't have to worry about that. Yeah, that definitely helps. Which is showcasing why I think Chris played this card, because it just, you know, shuts off all these the powerful yeah. spells that get you back in the game. He specifically said that like he wanted to shut off Kataxian Probe and Treasure Cruise. <laughs> so I mean that's what the card's there for. I don't think Silvergill Adept is high in his list, but it is going to work there. Yeah, this is interesting. Had he actually pitched the Adept, he would have the days for this guy. Obviously, I don't think that's the right play, but it's just given the known information, you know, yeah. it would be it would be great. Or, they would or, have nothing. or if Randy didn't uh, count the first one, he would have gotten to days the second one. <laughs> Potentially. I guess Chris, if Chris knows about the days, that's, that's not true. But it, it is kind of funny how that worked out. If Randy misses for a few turns here, I mean, Chris could be okay. I don't not, know not really, because <laughs> Randy's just going to play this Lord, and all of a sudden he's got, you know, two attacks from Adept, kills him. Oh, but not anymore. He did draw Path, which is going to be huge right here, because if he didn't draw Path, Randy just untaps, plays the Lord with Cavern, attacks for three, and now Chris is at three, and he's just dead the next turn from the island walking 3-1. Yep. But so, if, Chris, if, if Chris is trading off his spirits for Merfolk, he's not going to win either, though. so... I, I mean, he unless his, his plan is just to draw to moat, which could be a plan, but, w you know, when Dark Confidant's not a good threat, when you can't block any of Randy's threats, like, I don't know, I, I feel like, especially with Randy, has, like, treasure cruises in his deck, like, I feel like it's just not going to work out all that well. Now, this is pretty sweet to get into, you know, he waited patiently with the path and risked, Chris draw, uh, risked Randy drawing a misstep or a counter. And luckily for him, unlucky for Randy, he drew a Lord, which he thought would give it Island Walk, played it, and was able to remove it in combat and now block yeah. and clear the board. Yeah, I mean, I think that sequence is fine for Chris, but again, with, with both players on no cards, wow. Chris is a little better, but... He drew the moat! <laughs> there is that, it is. I think that's just game over, right? I really hope Randy just scoops instead of trying to play this out. If, he, if, if Randy... Okay, yeah. If Randy couldn't, if Randy couldn't win, then... <laughs> wow. What a draw. Well, Chris played 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 for the setup and there we have it. <laughs> you would think he had, you know, he uh God, I can't even I don't even know where I was gonna go. I was gonna say you think it's like he's got like the way he played, it's like he played for the moat, but you've only got one. But yeah. I guess he didn't really have many options anyway. He kind of had to trade off. It was just an unfortunate situation for him. But uh it, it ended up working out pretty fantastic for him. Moat. I had a moat resolved against me this weekend, but Delver flies over moat and yeah, moat also costs a lot against Delver. Yeah, it wasn't that exciting. At first, it was. I had a, a pyromancer and about a million tokens out, and then I was able to resolve a Trigon Predator, and I was able to ice his Restoration Angel. Trigon got yep. through, ate the moat, and then I time walked. And moat is not good against Trigon Predator. Yeah, and ate my opponent. Trigon is fantastic for me this weekend. I, I applaud you on your decision to include a Trigon in that deck list. 
Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a pretty common card in that kind of deck, and but I just thought it was it would be good the week that weekend. Yeah, I did go two one against shops. Yeah, I mean, shops is. I, I've never played a deck that where I feel like I'm a heavy favorite against shops. Like I guess some dredge decks are, but any blue deck, even if you side in eight cards, you're never like, yeah, I'm gonna crush shops because sometimes you just lose a die roll and lose on turn one. Like you, with your deck, uh, Shahar went three zero, Bob went two zero, and I went two one against shops, and my loss was a little ridiculous too. So it was actually a pretty good shot. I felt the shops yeah. matchup was good. Cool, cool. Looks All like right. uh, we're ready to to battle in a uh, game three here. Chris is looking for land, lotus, moat, force of will, blue card, force of will, blue card. The first turn kill from Chris's deck. That, that would be insane if he actually did, he did that. Land, lotus, moat, two force of wills, and two blue cards. And Randy did not have a curse catcher and a force of will of his own. Yeah, that, that, that would be the, the actual dream. Randy, well, Randy did not have a curse catcher. We, we, we've gotten that part down. <laughs> no, he does. He does. He has curse oh, he catcher. He does. Okay. Find time walk, force of will. He actually has the hand that would beat. Oh, he's him. just. But he's debating whether he wants to actually play the curse catcher, which. Yeah, he wants to silver gill adapt it. So Chris actually mulliganed into a hand that is not really exciting, but it did have misstep and sword supply shares, which is, you know, two good cards in this matchup. Yeah, it, it's, his opening hand is definitely not good, though. I'm not sure. I guess he brought in Devout Witness to stop Nolrod and because it's a body that can trade, but I don't know yeah. what else the Devout Witness can do here. It's not exciting. <laughs> we'll give it that. Man, I don't want to talk bad, but this deck does not look good. I, I just I don't get it. Do, it don't worry. Chris, Chris would not defend it. He, he was saying, like, look, the deck's not very tuned. <laughs> I really so, I appreciate his effort. I see what he was trying to do, and I'm, I'm like, you know. And decks I, like this have been good before. Yeah, innovation is awesome. But uh, did that come through the screen? Do you guys hear that? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, innovation is awesome, but it is, it's just not very powerful, and that's like, you know, what Vintage is about. If you're not going to be powerful, then you want to have a quick clock and have like kind of sort of like tempo elements, like days, and it doesn't have any of that kind of going for yeah. it. So it's a little weirdly positioned in the format. Yeah, and he's playing against another like kind of not powerful deck, but he's also behind in that matchup pretty significantly, I think. Not like insanely, but I mean, Randy didn't play a land second land until turn four in game one, and Chris didn't have a great draw. But Randy still, if again, if Randy, if they both resolve threats, Randy ends up winning that, which is not a good place to be in. Right. And, and every one of creature, all the creatures in Randy's deck are way more enormous than Chris's deck, and they're all basically unblockable. Yeah. So Chris is not going for the devout witness here. He's just trying to keep Randy up blue mana, which n not going to work out incredibly well. But it's got he's got a shot at least. Like currently, Randy can't cast True Name Nemesis, so I mean that's that, that is something. Yeah, and I like how Chris didn't expose his white mana. You know, yeah, if he left it in his hand so that he can play it and get a strip out. I mean, play it and cast Swords to Plowshares with a strip mana strip mine out. Yeah. And, and Chris, I think, you know, very intentionally uh, played, you know, didn't play the, the Tundra first. Of course, yeah. He, he knows he's got to be able to at least cast one of his white cards, preferably the swords. So if you're Randy, do you like time walking here or do you like playing Curse Catcher? Or uh, passing with Spell Pierce. That's actually even another option. And I think I wait for my Spell Pierce for turn four, yeah. to when he can possibly play Moat, just to have yeah. some backup against it. So I don't Spell Pierce, which means I don't wait. I think time walk's fine. Yeah. It's not great, but if you hit a land and you can run out the... True name. The true name, then you're, you're in pretty good shape here. Ooh, and he drew a cavern, so now the Force of War <laughs> won't actually be able to stop the true name. So it well, pretty much... Ra Ra Randy has drawn basically perfect <laughs> the couple of draw steps he needed to. Not that he was, like, behind this game, but th this is really going to you know put the nail in the coffin. Because now Chris has to draw... He's got a Force... But Randy has a force, so Chris has to draw a way around that spell pierce. Like he has to draw moat and then like lotus or something along oh, those lines. Yeah, he needs a mana source, like a white mana source or a lotus, because moat's double white. Yeah, he only has three mana anyway. He he's also facing a force wall and a spell pierce, and soon in yeah, a strip mine. <laughs> he's in a, a really bad spot here, actually. Well, Randy is unlikely to get last now. 
He's not completely safe. It depends on what Bob and Josh do this week. But uh, if Bob and Josh both win, then we have you know a three-way tie. What he wants, well, it could be even bigger because of some of the four fours that lost that were also four or five. It could be four or five. It could be up to six, yeah, seven. Yeah, that's true. Though it can't be an eight-way tie anymore because Efro crushed me. <laughs> yeah. He's in, a, he's in a pretty good mood right now. He's walking around, got a nice smile on his face. Well, he he, he told me he was like, man, he's like, man, I, I hope I hope uh, I hope I win this match so we can team together next week in Nashville. <laughs> he was kidding, of course, I, I think. But uh, <laughs> I don't know. He said he was canceling his ticket. Luckily, it was on Southwest, so he could cancel. No. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that game wasn't even close. I couldn't even be accused of throwing it. I mean, we talked about it a little earlier, but. My draws in my in the match against Defro were, I think the the nine draw steps or something between the two games was like a fluster storm in eight land or something. But in any case, Randy's continuing to march on the kind of inevitable march here since Chris needs a lot to go his way. He I guess on a, if he starts on an ancestral, he might be able to draw the right combination of cards. But I don't think he has enough draw steps to draw everything he needs here. Well, the thing is, right now, if he were to ancestral, Randy could misstep. He could misstep back. And then Randy could just spell Pierce, and we get you know he gets nowhere. Yeah. Now he doesn't have white mana because Randy stripped it, and his cards are all white, or they're just Force of Will and Mental Misstep, which don't do anything against a, a board presence already established. So he's pretty screwed here. I don't, I don't like not sending. I would have sent my adept here, I think, because then once it trades, then you can start sending your curse catcher. Yeah, and, and I think part of the reason Randy didn't is because the Lords, but if you draw a Lord, you're just so far ahead. You might as well plan for the game where you don't draw a Lord. Exactly. You win with a Lord anyways with a Cavern out. Yeah. One, one extra point of damage off a Curse Catcher is actually a, another turn off True Name. Exactly. No, right now he's at 10. It's going to take three turns, whereas if he's hitting for four, then it's going to take, you know, or it's going to take four turns now. It would take three turns. Oh, but Randy draws a Lord. Well, he wanted to make sure this this match wasn't close to being close. We haven't had too many competitive matches so far. Our first two matches have been kind of blowouts. Actually, every game has been a blowout, really. Yeah, I mean, I guess the other game was even, and then Chris drew a moat, which is but uh, <laughs> just, just seals the deal. Yeah. Well, I'm hoping it goes this way because if in my match, it's, if if there's a blowout like that, that's not close. It's if I have like some kind of nuts hand that just wins. So hopefully it goes like that because Josh looks like with his draws have to kind of grind me out. So. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm hoping it continues. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, uh, the the vault deck did beat a non vault deck today when Efro beat me, and that's the first time that's happened so far. So. <laughs> I've actually been playing it in the uh, in the queues, and I've been having success. The problem card has actually been Delver because it's been a quick clock. When backed up with disruption, it's been bad for me. But without Delver, you know, it's it's the clock's not as quick. So yes, uh, Randy wins. So the, the big tie is still. Seven way tie is still alive. Still alive. Yep. Efro's escaped, but uh, no no one else has. Randy dragged Chris into the tie bracket here. So who do we have? I know I'm last. Next we've got Tom Martell and Steve. This is a good one. So yeah. The Thing is, if St if Steve wins, he goes to the same record as you, and then you guys have to have a playoff for who's first and who's second. Right. So I'm rooting for Tom here. And if Tom wins, he joins Efro in the top at, at a five four. Yeah. And actually, Steve goes to five four. So that leaves it where it could actually be just four people because then if let's see, if Bob were to win, he would be four five. His opponent would be four five. If I were to lose, it could actually be a clean break here. Yeah. Well, if if Tom wins then you have to be 5-4 to get into the playoffs. Right. If Tom wins and then I lose and... Uh, oh, and you lose, yes. And Rich Shea loses, yeah. we have a clean break of four for the top four. Yeah, so it's possible that the, Tom is the first match that could actually heavily prevent the, the tie. I guess my match and Ephraim were the same. It was the same. But uh, if all the 5-4s end up making it, then, uh, then yeah, we don't have the giant scrum. But, you know, that's cool too. We, we still do end up having uh, a bunch of tiebreaker matches for seeding, but we don't have the, the huge, you know, yeah. giant tie for second or third or whatever it would be. Yep, yep. So it looks like we're going to take a quick break. Uh, we're going to switch out commentators, and uh, we're going to talk to a probably overjoyed Randy that he's not going to necessarily be last now. <laughs>